Welcome back to uh, the final episode of the single player portion, portion of Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I'm Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And final episode has an asterisk <laughs> next to it. Because there's probably going to be three or four or five more episodes. Possibly. But, but who knows? Who knows what's going to come out of this. But Tony, we're, we're at the Dr. Nefarious boss fight. We are at the Dr. Nefarious boss fight. Perhaps the greatest Ratchet and Clank boss fight in the history of the franchise, possibly, I would I'd be hard pressed to find a better one. I would I would not be surprised if people thought that this was the best boss fight in the history of boss fights, except for the Great Mighty Pooh in Conquer's. Possibly, Pepper. it's entirely possible. So, what the heck happened to him? That was weird. So, what? Uh, uh, tell me about your Dr. Nefarious boss fight experience because I, I, if I remember correctly it was quite a roller coaster ride it was, there was a lot going on Well, the, Dr. Nefarious was the first boss fight I ever really did uh, and, dude uh, they kept your sweet ass effects on it I know they sure did I'm trying to get back into the rhythm of how I dodge these kind of things I think the side jumps were a mistake I, don't know. Oh, I love those I, I do love these so, the one thing about the Dr. Nefarious boss fight that uh, I really liked was that by the time I was doing this, this was this was the absolute last thing I did on the game. And uh, by the time I was working on the Dr. Nefarious boss fight, every creative idea I had was completely and utterly exhausted. I had nothing left in the tank. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was completely lost. And the initial design was pretty scripted as to how the fight was going to progress, but... There was no real... I, I had no idea how his effects were going to go, and I had no... I had nothing. So... Because you'd already used up everything. most of your pink and most of your purple. Right. And uh, so I was just... I had no no idea of what I was going to do. And so with the day I started the boss fight, I just got on uh, Instant Message and just got a hold of one of the, whoever was online at the time. And I said, I just need you to give me two colors. Whatever two colors you give me is going to dictate how this game ends. And uh, the two colors they gave me were red and black. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I can work with red and black. And so that's where the th I started the whole effect on the laser beam effect with the red and black laser beam effect. And then off of that, I was like, okay, what else can I do with black? Because I, I figured... We don't really do any black effects. Like, if you look at everything in Ratchet & Clank, there's no real black effects. No, I mean, it's it's blue and red, mostly. Yeah, it's, I mean, and for good reason. I mean, we want our effects to be really bright, and they want to stand out. And you want to pop from the environment. Yeah, yeah, and black isn't really that kind of thing. But for the final boss, for something that was kind of unique that we're not going to see anywhere else, it's not bad. Uh, you know, and it stands out. Yeah, it does. Why don't I just do this? I just do whatever it does. <laughs> Well, except for that. Don't forget to buy uh, buy your My ammo, ammo, just yes. in case. Um, and that's where I sort of... That's the only way... That's where his effects have managed to come from. And after that, uh, you know, everything just sort of progressed from there. And the hologram attack sort of progressed from there. And so someone told you red and black. And, and that's that was... where it came from. And all then right. I, I started working on all the... Uh, the wormhole attacks that all got based off of that, and uh, the thing I was really proud of at the at this point is uh, I've only very recently gone through and played the last uh, which one was it? Ratchet and Clank. A crack, crack of time? time. I think I was that the last one. Uh, well, the last platformer single player Ratchet. Well, the last one you played, yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, when then I I hadn't seen that nefarious boss fight, and so when it started. And they kind of kept the color scheme around. I was like, yeah! <laughs> keep that color scheme. The one that was just pop thrown out at me with no consideration of what I was going to be doing it for. So wait, the, the artist you asked didn't even know what you were going to be using it for? I would, didn't ask an artist. I worked with someone who didn't even work at the company. Just one of my friends who was online. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had no idea what, what we were working <laughs> on. And I couldn't tell them, like, oh, I'm working on the final boss fight. You got it. I was just like, I just need two colors. 
and red and black was what came, and that's huh. where it all came from. So yeah, it, if it was an artist, that would have been pretty smart. What did oh. I just do? Wow, look at that. Wow. I should not use those charge boosts. Seems a little unnecessary for us to just murder you at yeah. the edge of the pit. This is a good looking fight, man. It is really good. I don't really have much else to say besides how good looking it is. And how frankly amazing it is in yeah. every aspect. Generally nowadays, when I make boss battles, I just try to copy this one. <laughs> uh, man, I love that. I love that ring effect. It's such a good ring effect. That one is... Uh, that ring is definitely stolen from Peter. Because it's the mines in the in the dam level. You know right. those mines that explode into the ring? I just stole that and then added a bunch of colors to it. And oh, okay. added it on the lob and put it in a little bit of camera shake. And it's amazing what you can do with the stolen effect. Stealing effects is the way to go, man. It is the way to go. And Pete, you can do worse than stealing effects from Peter. Peter Hastings made some of the best looking things in the history of the franchise. Like all those bridges that Ratchet and Clank is famous for where they come across. That was Peter Hastings. Yeah. Alright, let's try this again. I'm gonna try the uh, charge boots again. I'm gonna give it one more shot and see how it goes. Just try to skip through most skip of the Skip through the enemy segment. That's how I think everybody does it. I don't think anybody actually I, does this proper. I remember doing it both ways, just to make sure it was possible to beat it the you know the way you're supposed to do it. Oh, oh dude! I'm not in a good spot here. I'm not in the worst spot. It's fun. Here we go. Now I'm alright. What enemy segment? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this was like... Oh, uh, what the heck? Whoa. You don't even see the effects now. Wow. That is a problem. The uh, uh, dodging past combat problem was something that... Yeah, it's it's something we fought all the way. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just a constant issue where we kind of have to... It's amazing how many players don't want to play the game. They just want to get through it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah, just... Yeah, well, I mean, it is wrong if we're making all this content. We do want people to experience it. What I, I guess what I mean is there's nothing wrong with being the type of player who likes to get to the end. Right. But, uh, uh, so what we have to do is create incentives for you to want to keep going through. Like, right. Like our upgrade systems and stuff like that. Yeah, I alluded in the last episode that there was some drama with the Dr. Nefarious boss fight. And, uh... One of the big, one of the reasons it was a bit contentious is that, uh, from what I gathered, that Drek, when we made Drek on Ratchet and Clank One, uh, he was definitely too hard. Yes, uh, I think that's pretty much a given. That Drek was probably done a little bit too hard, and the proto pet that we did in Ratchet and Clank Two. Uh, I got the impression that people felt that we went a little bit too far the other way. Right. It was too easy, according to fan feedback. Right. Um, and so we had to find this weird middle ground in Dr. Ferris where we're like, okay, we definitely need him to be hard, but we can't have him be direct hard. Uh, and trying to find that middle ground is uh, really hard. Well, one of the nice things about Dr. Nefarious is that all of his attacks are fair. They're all right. telegraphed. They have a, a good telegraph beforehand. You can learn what they are. And if you learn what they are, you really don't have an excuse for taking damage. Right. But uh, you do have to learn them, and you do have to apply them. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why this battle is so much fun. Well, look at that. The double laser beam effect that we saw on the... Uh, it's happening here. No, but didn't it? wasn't it supposed to happen in this one? No, 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 no. There was not supposed to be a double laser beam. Because, no. see, only one of them is chasing me. Oh, right. One of them is just sort of pointing at the ground for something. Maybe it's pointing to the origin? I don't know. It's very that's very weird. Oof. That attack used to beat the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what do I got? Any more discs? And it'd be better if we had higher level weapons, but yeah, so we got the, the creator of this boss fight we fighting this boss battle. We can't do much better than this. We haven't gone to the uh, crazy circle hologram attack, which is the one I really liked. I really liked doing that one where he creates the holograms all around you. And oh, and they awesome. start coming one at a time yeah, at you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that one's cool. 
When does he do? Is that like the last? It's he has to be at low health and he has to be on the ground, and so he, it's kind of like a, a new attack he adds to his repertoire right at the end of the boss fight. Got it. So how did you how did you set it up so he picks his attacks? Like what uh, what sort of things does he do? He just goes in a pattern. Uh, I mean, it's always the bombs and then the guns and then the holograms. Oh, here's the super hologram attack. I need a really good gun. So you have a really good there. gun? You could snipe it. <laughs> let's, let's do the eight. Oh, there oh, they go. Oh, shit! So, yeah, you, oh, okay, oh man. As long as you keep moving, you're pretty much okay. That's exactly right? it, and most of the attacks are kind of done that way, where the idea was just keep the player moving and you should be okay. Well, I mean, like, I think a lot of people would be surprised at how many players don't ever... Like that, they run into a combat situation and then take their finger off of the yeah 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 the stick. I mean, there's almost as many of those as the ones who never take their fingers off the stick. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's developing combat scenarios that work for both type of plays is pretty difficult. It is. It's a. It's uh. There's a lot to keep track of. I mean, that's the thing is that we kind of get into these rhythms about how we feel like the way we play Ration and Plank is the way everybody plays Ration. That's why the focus has are so jarring a lot of the time. I'm like, wow, I don't. How would, how did they even get that into their head that that's how they were supposed to be? Is everybody sort of ah? What the? Why does it keep getting the plasma? The plasma Dude, you've got bullets coming in from the other. Uh... Oh yeah, I know the guys that were still alive. Those guys should have all died. Uh, this is this thing. They're in trouble since they hit. Oh man. Dude, he has no health. There he oh, goes. You g Did you just die? No. Okay. I got it. I got it. Woo! <laughs> Dude, Lawrence in the wig. So this second part was the other really big point of contention in the Doc Nefarious boss fight, is that we put so much time and effort to make that part of the boss fight good. And then there was a whole second boss fight that we had to do. Right, the hover ship and the this giant This whole thing. And, I mean, and then... uh. Quark shows up, and Quark's supposed to be flying around, and they wanted Quark's AI to be super advanced, and like having him actually really do a big part in fighting him. Like, it's really a whole second boss fight here, at least that they wanted, and we had to keep sort of paring this down and just be like, "You're asking too much. Like, there, it's not possible with what we have to do uh, the bio blitter to be. We can't have the bio blitter fight be as complicated as the nefarious fight was. One or it's one or the other." And we had already put so much time into the Nefarious boss fight where it's like, okay, well, the bio obliterator is just going to be pretty simple. And uh, he's just going to function as an exclamation point, really, to the whole thing. And uh, it, it was it was, it was was rough because there were people that definitely had the vision that the bio obliterator was supposed to be the real, the real final boss fight. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, you had two fake-outs with Nefarious. Yeah, I know. Plus the third fake-out with the bio... It just seems like it's a bit much, that's all. I mean, and the rockets on the bio blitter fight were also a bit of a thing, because there's no real strategy to avoiding the rockets except to move. As long as you're moving, you avoid the rockets. And uh, they didn't really think that was a really good strategy for avoiding the rockets. It's kind of like, well, there's no actual skill involved. You just move around and avoid the rockets. It was a lot of... There was a lot of back and forth trying to figure out what was going to go on. But... You know, we end with the bio obliterator. Bio obliterator is pretty easy. I always thought Nefarious was a real boss fight, and the bio obliterator was, was, was gravy. Yeah, it was the gravy. It was just you get to put the nail in his coffin. Right, exactly. And exile him into space forever. For, well, for ever three games and ever. Yeah, and, well, you know, it's nice. Nefarious gets to come back, but Drek doesn't because Drek is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people don't realize this, but with like at Insomniac, a lot of times we'd be like. Hey, what if we brought Drek back? And people would say, no, Drek is dead. He can't come back because he's dead. Like, well, can't we resurrect him with something? Like, someone builds a machine that resurrects? No, <laughs> Drek is dead. So if Drek ever comes back, I will be surprised, but not too surprised. <laughs> I was just about to say, wouldn't it be funny if in this game that just got released, Drek is the villain? Oh, oh yeah. you look like the fool. Never, never, never happened. Unless, of course, it did. In which case, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the little... Uh, the movie. The, yeah. The Secret Agent Clank movie. The most expensive part of this entire game. Snow Beast gets a little appearance. 
Oh, Bring shit. Bring him back a little bit. Because he's so beloved. That's right. I mean, we did name an award after him. Right. So. Reused helicopter. Yep. From the rest of the game. From Thugs Are Us, yeah. It's amazing when you look through this cutscene how many are just sort of reused assets. The banana, the, the banana, banana cannon. Don't do you any good this time, Agent Clank? I have been waiting for this moment a long time, and now I am going to blow you into a million pieces! <laughs> I do really like this little touch where everybody was in the theater watching the movie. It felt like a good, a good proper ending. Especially for a trilogy. For the trilogy, yeah. Yeah. You get everybody, like, just bit characters, like uh, Edwina and stuff. You know, like, the the whole Al family is yeah, yeah, yeah. in the second row. Yeah, characters we haven't seen the, since Ratchet and Clank 1. The Quark and... super fan, yeah. Oh, now it's credits. Now thing. it's the credits. I still think that the way Insomniac does credits, which is just list everybody's name out alphabetically, is the best way to do credits. I would agree. Uh, it, it just the least amount of ego inserted into it. Yeah. And you know, it it, it also helps protect us from, uh, uh, you know, like unwanted calls. Yes, you know? absolutely. Because if people don't know what you do, then they can't harass you to you know, uh, leave for a different company. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. Oh, fucking Ed Kim! Ed Shonuff Kim! We didn't talk <laughs> at all about Shonuff. Did we not? No, not even once. That's a shame. Oh, man. We're horrible people. Oh, well. You can't get everybody. It's very important that everybody knows that every name on this list is important. Absolutely. Every Again, that, name on this list. That's what I was kind of, that's kind of why I think the alphabetical credits are the are the good way to go. Is that it's so easy to see like this ridiculous title above somebody's name and be like, oh, they're clearly really important. And so like, well, I mean, they have the title. That doesn't mean that they're contributed more than any other given person on the credits list. Yeah, I mean, every person on here contributed to the secret sauce that made the game great. That's right. Uh, I mean, just looking at these names, like most of these people, if they weren't there, the game would have been vastly different than what Absolutely. It was. Except for that Mary Stout. She didn't, didn't do shit on the didn't do game. anything. Not a thing. And, uh, and also that Tony Garcia guy. He did a lot. Uh, well, the game would have been well, better without him. According to Moby Games, he's formed a bunch of studios and like he's friends with like other famous developers. These credits look so just dated. I don't know what it is. Just the well, the, it's it's real simple UI. Right? Yeah. Just the unbordered gradient black boxes with text on top. I mean, these things were always done at the last second. Yeah, absolutely. Like with as little as little work as possible to go into them. Uh, and you know, you see some companies doing like big productions for their credits. I always wanted to, but that was just not the way that this <laughs> ended up working because it's the last thing that we do. It just goes in dead last. Everybody forgets about it until one day someone's like, oh, who, fuck, who's got the credits? <laughs> the part I always feel bad about the credits is when you're working with everybody at the studio, it's usually pretty easy. You get their name right. You know, you get their title right. Nobody's going to really complain. But, uh, man, it's all those other people, like all the publishers and all the middleware, they have, like, just requirements of how like their names have to appear and who appears in what order and, and how big their logo is compared yeah. to the other logo. It's just kind of like, man, just let it be. I, some people take credits really seriously and a lot of times it's a lot of, you know, and middleware... I have never worked with anyone who took credits really seriously. <laughs> there's never, there's never, there's never been an explosion at any company I've worked for. Not an explosion, but they do have... I mean, the minute you have a list of requirements, you're taking the credits more seriously than I feel you should be taking the credits. Fair enough. Fair enough. Are we, are we really going to commentate on the whole credits? I don't know. I don't know how long these are going to go. We're done, I guess. we got to say goodbye. we gotta, we got to say an ending. Do you have any point, any point to say at the end of this at the end of the series? We've revisited another game. Uh... 
taken a step through the past. What have you learned, Mike? Well, Ratchet and Clank 3 was... It's a very uh, special game for me. Uh, it was one of the first times... Uh, that I ever really felt this good when the game was done. Because, like, four or five weeks before the game shipped, it was a disaster. Right? And then when it shipped, it was amazing. And just to see that everybody sort of pull in and and knuckle down and make that change happen was really cool. So f- being able to come through and play this again is just so real emotional for me. Choke it up a little. <laughs> maybe you should maybe you should take over now. Um well I mean it's just it's amazing to go back and see this and um I, I especially like going back and playing through the HD collection and seeing sort of what's in there and what's changed and what's the same. And um it really does feel for the first time like I'm seeing this with a fresh pair of eyes, which is really interesting. And it's not something that I thought I would ever really get the opportunity to do. Which was seven years later. Seven years later. Um and uh so I mean I, I really enjoyed doing it. I hope other people enjoyed watching it. I hope we provided some insights. Uh Apologies to everybody that we didn't mention, you know, people whose names we forgot. People who we skipped in the credits because Tony doesn't watch their name go by. I don't apologize to them. But uh, I think we're, I think, you know, I think it was a a fun experience. It was, it was interesting seeing um, how it stood the test of time, what worked, what didn't, uh, how my opinions might have changed. Also, watching the, the change from the SD to the HD collection was very interesting. Yeah. We got to talk about a lot of stuff that we otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with this particular season of content. Uh, I did, too. I think, it, I think it turned out really well. And uh, I just want to thank everybody who was watching along with us, uh, you know, who was kind enough to write a comment, uh, letting us know what they thought, uh, hearing from everybody who, uh, you know, I might not have heard from before telling me, you know, what they thought of the game in retrospect and how it holds up now. Uh, I really appreciate all that. And uh, I was really glad. I'm really glad. That so for developer commentary, my name is Mike Stout. And I'm Tony Garcia. And we won't catch you next time because there ain't no next nope, time. Nope, never happening again. With an asterisk. Nope, never. Never? Not ever. No. Oh. oh, also, Happy New Year. Yes. Because that's probably going to be right around now. Yeah. Happy happy either New Year just happened or will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Alright. Woo, we're free! We're done. Fucking done.